In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a cool and interesting surreal technique where we slice through the figure or object and make it look as though we can see the interior of it. Now, I've already gone ahead and isolated the figure and created a background for the figure. If you need help isolating, check out one of my videos on the quick select tool or pin isolation. I have several of them out there and uh, we're going to jump right ahead so that we don't spend time doing that. I'm going to get my pen tool, which is P on your shortcuts, and make sure that it is set to path. I'm actually going to take a couple of slices out of her and here's how I'll do it. I'm going to click out here oh, outside of her and I'm going to click inside then click and drag with the pen tool and start creating a slice which appears to contour with her body so you are gonna have to give a little effort and attention to your figure and what would look realistic for whatever it is that you're doing this technique on in this case I'm following the contour of her back I'm using the pen tool to go along and create the lines for the path where I'm going to make it look like she's sliced open in just a minute. Get back here. It's most apparent around the edges, so just make sure that you get, especially if you're doing a round object, make sure you get the roundness in there. All right, so this is going to be the base for my slice. I'm going to create another slice up here. This one will be a little more complex because it's going around her arm, but I think we can still do it pretty easily. You want to leave yourself enough room when you're creating these paths that you actually can put something inside and underneath. So I'm making this slice somewhat large to where you should be able to see underneath well when we create the next layer. The layer that's not there which will make it look as though we're seeing her insides. So here we go. I've created this slice going to finish that up. If you need to refine these, mess with these a little bit to get them right, do that now. And then let's go over to our paths panel. You'll notice that both of these slices were put onto a single work path for us, and that's fine for our purposes today. We're going to turn these into a selection. Be careful though, you notice that my last path is selected by default and the other one is not. You can tell because the points on the path are active. If I right now try to convert that path to a selection it will only do the one. What I want to do actually is both so you can use your path select tool right here A on your shortcut and just click away to deselect that one so that they both will go. Now I'm going to load both of them as a selection go back to my layer I want to slice these areas out, which means I need to inverse my selection and then mask it. So I'm going to hit Control Shift I. Or you could go right up here to select inverse. Now I'm selecting everything but my slice, which is perfect. I'm going to go here and click the mask. And I just added a layer mask. So now we can see right through our figure. It's time to start recreating their innards. This is really quite easy. What you need to do is create a layer below your layer. You can do that by holding control or command and clicking on the create new layer or uh, you can just click down there and create a new layer. I like shortcuts myself. We're going to get our pen tool again and this time we are not going to use paths. We are going to use a shape. We're going to get that fill color and we're going to select a skin tone. You can do this to taste it doesn't matter uh, the skin tone. I'm actually going to get a darker one because I imagine that if a part of her were floating up here it would kind of be shadowing that lower layer. So I'm going to hit OK. Now we're going to create a shape. I'm going to click inside of where she already is and then start building this shape out here. So I'm making this look as though it's the part of her that would be on the inside. We're just going to make it solid. No blood, guts, and gore. Sorry. 
All right, that looks good. Let's do this same thing for up here. We're going to make this appear that we are seeing the interior of her figure. I'm going to try to get the lines a little further away from that top part of the body just because that's looking a little funky. And it doesn't matter down here how much space you have in the area that can't be seen, so I'm just going to pull it out and not take a lot of time doing that. All right, so if I click on my figure, now we have this sliced appearance. And because these are shapes, we can go back and edit them. So if it's not quite right, you can go here and get your direct select tool and select one of these points and just move it around until you get it the way that you like it. Now a couple of tips here to make it, I think, a bit cooler is add some gradients. So what we can do is go to the shape layer, blending options, and select gradient overlay. Now on that I'm going to get the multiply blend mode and I'm going to make the style linear. If you don't know why I'm doing all this it's okay just trust me and I'm gonna change my angle until I feel like the shadow is in the spot that I want it get my opacity how I like, hit OK. Now I'm going to right click and copy that layer style and then just right click and paste the layer style onto my other one. Now you'll notice that we have a bit of a gradient. I think it makes it look a little more organic and less flat and boring. There's one more thing I suggest that you do which is to add a little bit of texturing You'll notice that skin generally has textures, so when you create these interiors, they don't. They're just a flat color that's not very convincing. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can go into the blending options, and you can get a pattern. You can get a pattern overlay, and then just pick some sort of organic-looking pattern. Uh, I find it better to pick like the canvases that they have for painting and then just make sure that you reduce the scale of that way 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 down until it's it's like itty bitty and then reduce the opacity down so there we go we have a little bit of texture it's not overwhelming but it's obvious and it's something that you can edit dynamically which is really nice you can go back in there if you don't like it and take it down a little further now I can copy the layer style again, paste it on this other one, and we have some texture for our slices. And this is a cool technique you can do with anything, and because you did it with shapes, you can always go back and edit those uh, shapes later if you don't like them, tweak your lines. It's really simple, but it's fun and creative. I would love to see what you do with this technique and what you choose to slice up. So send me your work. I would like to see what you do with it. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Don't forget to subscribe for more cool Photoshop tips in the future. And I will see you next time.